Hi there, welcome. Uh, the first video that I wanted to put up has to do with reproducing your drawing. So you're gonna be working physically in a sketchbook like this making drawings. You're gonna be working on trace paper like this making drawings. And uh, so what we need to do is to digitize those in a way that they are clear, well-focused, um, the lighting is, is good, uh, and the file size is manageable so that you can upload them and that I can download them or at least take a look at them online uh, and that myself and the teaching assistants can provide comments and corrections and do the grading, right? Uh, so there's a variety of ways of doing that. The first thing that we need to consider is lighting. We can use interior lights and I will demonstrate how to try and do that. Um, but actually the sun can be one of the easiest and uh, best light sources for taking a good photograph, whether you're using an actual camera or you're using your phone to do this. Uh, and I will demonstrate how to do that because luckily the sun is shining today and I can get out there and show you how I've been doing this for years. Uh, and then I'll come back inside and show how we can do it inside uh, in either case, whether we're talking about sketchbook or drafted drawings. So one of the first things that we need to consider is, particularly if we're working with a sketchbook here, um, the sketchbook, you know, depending on the type of sketchbook, it may or may not uh, want to lie flat, right? And if you're trying to hold a camera over it and you're trying to take a picture, how do you get it to lie flat? Well, I use clips like this or, you know, if I'm photographing outside, sometimes I'll just like put my foot, you know, my toe on the corner of a page. But if you can get, you know, a decent sized clip, you can then just kind of clip the top of the book or the bottom of the book and that's going to help it to lie flat. You could use other clips like this um, depending on the book that you've got. Maybe you just want to clip some of the pages uh, but you know you have to sort of experiment a little bit but the goal here is to get this to lie flat. If we're talking about drafted drawings uh, one of the first considerations is that no matter how you photograph it, you're probably going to want to use uh, a clean backing sheet, right? Because the idea behind trace paper is that it is uh, transparent or close to transparent. And so that means if you put this on, let's say, some dark surface to take a picture of it, we start to lose the ability to see what you've drawn. So a backing piece of paper is an important consideration. And you can just, you know, tape it down to this backing piece of paper, lie it flat like that, and take a picture of it. But if you're wanting to go outside or, you know, to use the sun, as I've mentioned, then maybe you just need, you know, a piece of wood or a reasonably uh, stout piece of cardboard, for example, something. Uh, that is going to hold it flat and support the drawing while you're taking a picture of it. And then you put your, your backing paper down, tape that down to it, and then tape your drawing to it. And then you could pick it up and bring it outside uh, if you want to do that, or uh, just you know take a photograph of it inside. So here we are outside, uh, and really all I need to do is think about where the sun is, and how I want to arrange either my sketchbook or this board with my drawing on it and then take a quick picture of it with my phone. So in this case, the wind is blowing a little bit so I'm gonna have to do it this way. So I'm propping my sketchbook up on my foot a little bit so that the sun is really gonna shine on it well uh, and maybe waiting for the breeze to die down a little bit. But then I just want to kind of get in here, make sure I'm not casting a shadow on this, and take a picture, okay? I would do the same thing with this, just kind of zero in on it, and snap a photo. And that's it. And I've got it, and I can go back inside and edit it if I want to. 
If we're going to be photographing indoors like this, what we want to do is uh, have more than one light source. If we're only to have uh, one light source, then you'll notice that wherever you position this light source, some part of the drawing is going to be bright and some part of the drawing is going to be dim. We want to avoid that. So whatever you can do to create at least a couple of light sources, you don't need more than three certainly, but two is a, you know, a good place to start. Three can help. Um, you want to arrange things so that you get a balance of light or as balanced as possible across the entire surface of the drawing or across the entire uh, page spread or single page of the sketchbook. So I might, you know, move these around a little bit, getting them into position so that we're, you know, they're reasonably close to the subject. And I'm looking for, you know, kind of lighter areas and darker areas. And I'm trying to arrange these in a way where those start to disappear, where I have a balance of light across the entire drawing. Once that's set up, I'm ready to take a picture. So again, now that we've got uh, our lights in position, um, I've got just one clip on here that's kind of holding this paper down so that this is reasonably flat. Um, now I've got my phone and I'm just gonna take a picture on the regular sort of camera setting um, and sort of see what we get, right? So I want to make sure that I'm holding the camera really kind of perpendicular to the page. I don't want to be taking a picture from this angle because that's going to distort the image. You want to get directly over it, you know, right in the center, directly over it, position it in the viewfinder, maybe tip the camera as you need to so that you're getting a, a full kind of rectilinear <laughs> representation in your viewfinder before you hit the shutter. Uh, and then when you're ready, you just uh, hit the shutter, okay? Um, and, you know, probably it's going to be a fine photograph. Uh, if not, we'll talk about ways of editing that later. But for the time being, if you got the picture, you got the picture, okay? One of the things you want to do is not have the camera so far away that you're taking a picture of a lot of space around your subject. You really want the kind of, you know, the viewfinder on the camera to kind of, you know, to frame it as closely as possible where you're not cutting things off, but you're also not just including a lot of extra stuff that, you know, in the picture that you don't need. So it might work sometimes better uh, to either, you know, take a picture of the entire page spread or to only focus on one page or another page, right? So depending on what you think is going to work better, uh, you know, in terms of taking the picture, do what you need to. The other thing, the other uh, possibility that we can use here is a photo scanning app. And the one that I use is just called PhotoScan. Uh, I've got an Android phone. I know that this is, this is available on iPhones as well, but it kind of goes to the next level of uh, actually taking four different images and then unifying them so you can eliminate glare, you can get a better image generally of what you're looking at. So the way that you do that is just like taking a picture. Uh, you hit the shutter and then it tells you sort of where to move the camera. You move it to one corner, then you move it up to another corner. And I'm simply following the instructions here, the graphic instructions. Uh, and now I've got it. And I'll show that in just a minute. Um, the idea here is that it is moving your camera around the page and taking images and then again stitching them together so that you get a better representative image of what it is that you're trying to to photograph okay so that's a good alternative as well so here's another view of uh, the photo scan app I've just got my book propped up on my drawing table there and 
Uh, I want to arrange it in the viewfinder so it's pretty straight. Uh, and then I hit the shutter and these dots pop up. And I want to move my camera. It's giving me directions. It's telling me to come over to, whoops, it's going off the camera. Uh, but you get the idea and then it's done and then uh, I have that image, okay? The other thing though that you can do here with the PhotoScan app is hit where it says adjust corners. So I hit adjust corners and that gives me the complete image that PhotoScan took. And what I can do is get in here and just put my thumb on one of these corners and it gives me a more kind of close up view of that and I can tell it exactly where to put that corner. Uh, I can kind of go around and do the same thing for all of these corners, those little crosshairs there that you see. That's what I'm looking at. And I just, you know, make sure that the corner is where it wants to be. When I'm done with that, I come down here and click done. And then what we get is a, a cropped version. So it's not including anything, you know, outside of the book. It's really just zeroed right in on the book. Um, not sure why it's upside down. I guess because I, uh, you know, was taking it this way and the camera doesn't know which way is up. Anyway, uh, that's how you use PhotoScan. It's a really good solution uh, in addition to just the camera app on your phone. So obviously what I just did with the PhotoScan app brought up another consideration, which is the orientation of the image. And really just about any uh, camera app or even if you're just pulling up an image in a file explorer, you'll have the opportunity to click rotate image. Uh, you don't need special editing software, photo editing software to make that happen. But do check that, right? We want the images to be right side up so that uh, I'm not both downloading your images and then having to rotate them in order to, to see the text and all of that kind of thing. So just double check that your images are right side up. One other consideration has to do with focus. Uh, most camera phones or phones that include a camera, which are most phones these days, have a very good sort of autofocus, on-the-go, uh, you know, capability. Uh, so you don't usually have to worry too much about that. But you do want to check it. You know, as soon as you take a photograph, especially if you're going to set up lighting or go do it outside, you know, as soon as you take that picture, you want to, like, click on that photo and then zoom in on it and double check that it is focused well because if you just assume that the focus is fine, um, the camera might not have adjusted or had time to adjust its focus or whatever. You just wanna make sure, just double check after you take a photograph that it is in focus uh, and that everything that you caught, everything you're trying to catch before you turn off your camera or put your phone back in your pocket and walk inside or turn off the lights, you just want to double check it. At some point, it will be clear that you're going to be getting it right uh, and you'll be fine. But especially as you take the first few photographs, you want to double check your focus. Another alternative is to actually use a physical scanner. Uh, many printers now these days are coming with a scanner integrated into it. Uh, it's rare that you have scanners where the, the glass is big enough to accommodate an 11 by 17 drawing, and a lot of the drawings that we'll be doing will be that large. So a scanner uh, can be a good thing, except for that limitation. And the other limitation, in my experience with scanners, is that some of the media types that we use, specifically graphite, and watercolor uh, are not picked up terribly well by the optical uh, scanners, by, by the plate scanners where you lay a drawing down. It can work, but in again, in my experience, it takes a fair amount of tinkering with the, uh, the scanning software 
right? The, the software that you use to set up the scan. And, and so I just find that, you know, most of us have a phone or a camera available to us. I just find like taking a picture and then if necessary, editing that picture a little bit is a much more direct and quick and uh, surefire way of really capturing the physicality of the drawing. Uh, scanned images, particularly like if we're looking at this, there's this very light blue up here in watercolor. Um, that's one of the things that in my experience, scanners don't capture very well. It starts to become very pixelated. Same thing with graphite. Uh, if, if you're doing a drawing that has some, you know, subtle tones in it with graphite, scanners, unless you really have a good scanner and you really know how to use it, have a tendency to drop information in a random way. And what we end up seeing are pixelated portions of images. Whereas a decent phone camera, a decent you know, handheld camera, it doesn't have that problem, especially if it is lit well, okay? One more consideration and then we'll finish this video. And that has to do with file size. Every camera has settings in it where you can adjust how big the file size is going to be when you snap that shutter. You want to shoot for something in the range of about two megabytes. If it's a big giant file, then it's going to take you longer to upload it and you might have some issues. The upload might fail if your internet connection isn't really stable. And then we're downloading these and I'm going to be downloading a lot of them. And so that's a, you know, a time consideration. If I click download and I'm sitting there waiting for a 10 megabyte file to download, that can be problematic. So uh, experiment with this. Take a few pictures and then look in your file explorer, whatever it is, at what the resulting file size is. And if it's a great big file, if it's five megabytes, six, 10, 12, whatever, you wanna adjust your settings so that the resulting file, as I said, is about two megabytes and not bigger than that. Uh, that should be more than enough to get a good clear image that is focused well, something that I can zoom in on if I need to, but it's not so big that it clogs up the pipes when we're trying to upload and download. And that's really it. You know, I'm sure some questions will come up about these processes that I'm putting in front of you. Uh, just rest assured that it takes a couple of times of trying it. And uh, after that, you know, once you have a little bit of practice doing it, you'll be able to do it very easily and quickly. Uh, and you'll get into a workflow that will uh, get you to where you need to be uh, pretty fast. This incidentally is also a set of skills that you will not only be using for this class, handling, you know, physical drawings and digitizing them, uploading, download, dealing with file size, all of these things are the kind of things that you're going to be doing pretty regularly if you're going to be in the design fields from now on. Okay. I hope that helps. And uh, I look forward to putting together the next video for you, but do ask questions if uh, you're doing this work and, and you're running into problems. Please let me know and I'll do everything I can to help. Okay, until next time, see ya.